General of the Department of Arts and Culture. He joins us now in the studio for more. Very good uh, evening to you and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's just first start with the theme, why indigenous languages? Why was it felt that it could help further the rights of South Africans, a concentration on this whole a thematic approach on Human Rights Day? Mm. Uh, thanks very much, uh, good afternoon, Sipi. So it coincides with the United Nations Declaration uh, of uh, this year as the year for indigenous uh, languages. Mm -hmm. And um, then looking at the human rights issue, uh, it is clear that in South Africa we still have a long way to go in promoting and protecting the indigenous, indigenous languages, mm -hmm. despite the existence of policy, but the utility aspect as well as just the respect of these uh, um, languages, diverse languages that were previously marginalized. Um, it's something that we need to work on. But what has been the finding? I heard the president mention it earlier on, saying that it's just even a victory for South Africans to be able to address the nation in certain languages. But what has been the findings of people's ability to use their indigenous languages Say, for instance, in business settings or in negotiations, whether for employment or for even, we, we spoke about the case of that disabled old woman in Bethal in Mpumalanga and, and being able to access basic human rights. Now the, it's a bit of the problem has been, uh, uh, we must first accept that a lot of work has been done. Policy is there. The institutions like the a commission for the protection and promotion of cultural and linguistic um, rights as well as religious rights is there. We've got the Pen South African Language Board. We've got the laws that are saying we must use, at least each province should be able to look at dominant languages, section six of the constitution. So the legislation is there, government has put that in place. Then challenge that I think we all have is that when it comes to indigenous languages, we still look at down upon them and think that they do not carry emotions, experience, they don't have scientific content. And we are still having this colonial mind mentality mm. that says English is the only way. But I'm glad you mentioned that the policy is there. But in reference to knowledge production, for instance, you would also admit that while the intention is there to grow and strengthen these languages and everyday practices. We talk about dominance though. Uh, South Africa because of urbanization we see that there are a lot of languages that are dominant. So how do you negotiate that equality and mm. uh, just the status quo which you mentioned business mm. or, or English and Afrikaans being used as a dominant languages officially and um, I think the president today demonstrated that an individual can speak multiple languages. He, he was able to speak across a number of languages. So firstly, it starts and begins with us, the mindset. Do I want to learn this language? Because the law can be there, but if there are no resources to teach that language, there are no resources or books for the learners to be able to go through and learn these languages. There, are no bo there is no one who writes in these languages. You're not developing and promoting So how that. does government capacitate those who want to? Because I know there are a lot of people who do want to produce books for primary school, even preschool levels in indigenous languages, but they face challenges of marketing, of distribution, or even access, getting attended to be able to distribute or produce some of those books. Mm. No, and recognizing that problem, Minister Tetua uh, came with a very novel idea uh, that we must have what we call a publishing house. And we'll be launching that next, uh, in the next month, exactly to coincide with addressing this issue of indigenous languages development, because they hit the ceiling. The established publishing houses are there, but sometimes they don't have time for these, for these uh, languages. And, and therefore, when you write and you don't have credentials that they want, you find that your, your indigenous language written book doesn't see the light of the day. So we will be moving with that uh, particular mm. aspect first. Okay. But secondly, we've got what we call um, uh, awards, uh, literary awards, that encourages uh, 
all the written books that are written in the... I need to quickly ask office. you this question before we move on to the next subject, and that is sign language. The president mentioned that that will soon become an official language. How far is that process? Oh, it's at an advanced stage. Um, uh, in fact, it has been discussed at uh, the review com parliamentary review committee, uh, constitutional committee, and uh, as the president uh, uh, indicated, uh, it's there to be debated now. Okay. And so I want to talk about the Legends Project and uh, the Department of Arts and Culture. We've seen recently the arrest of uh, world-renowned playwright uh, Welcome Somi, allegedly because of theft or, or in linked to the theft of 8 million rand from this project. What is the latest? The minister pleased, of course, about the arrest, but surely surprised about who was arrested. We were all uh, quite um, surprised, in fact, uh, shocked that um, a person of that caliber would be the one impl allegedly implicated in the siphoning of those funds. But what we were grateful for was that uh, the executive uh, of the trust was able to move with speed when they discovered the money has been um, transferred from the trust account uh, at uh, the bank uh, to a personal account. and they couldn't find the money so they moved with speed uh, and we congratulate that when you say that. they moved with speed I, I want to question that because i do recall a press briefing by uh, some of the legends so who are tr trustees saying that they know who is responsible but that information is not coming to light and, and the last conversation i had with the minister was his concern that nobody had been arrested so in reference to speed what are you talking about I'm doing what because firstly in, in January when they eventually discovered the money has uh, the coffers have been emptied, they then went to open the case. Uh, when they did that, they were then referred to the Priority Crimes, mm -hmm. Commercial Crimes Unit. And the Hawks moved, uh, I must say, they, they really worked hard because they had to then interview all of the legends, the executive level of them. We organized that meeting, they had that interview. Okay. Yeah, so it was a, a quite a process. One of the concerns the minister also raised was about the transactions and how this theft came to be or how this misappropriation of funds came about. And he, he questioned whether or not FMB were vigilant enough and he raised very serious concerns. Has there been a meeting or has he sought to have a meeting? Does he intend to have a meeting with the bank to discuss this? Yes, already the, the bank's part of the speed was exactly that. We engaged with the bank. I, he ministered or delegated me to directly meet with the bank and I did that. Have they shed yes. light on how this could have happened? Yes, they did. and. Um, through then, of course, you know, promotion, you know, uh, access to information, you need to follow particular procedures to get client information uh, between the bank and the client. So we had to follow that process, and the, the department then assisted the, le the legends to acquire the. Are you able to share account. how the theft came about? How the funds were able to be manipulated in such a way, mm. manner that they ended up in a personal account? Without prejudicing the case, this is what the bank indicated, that um, there was a use of electronic um, banking. So in other words, there was a transfer of the money. And unfortunately, the mechanisms the legends had agreed with the bank seemed to have been breached because according to their understanding, there are three who are the signatories. Yet when these transactions happened, they, firstly, the other two, never got the notification that usually has So who to are the three signatories? It's um, Mr. Um, um, Dr. We Wiley Serote, as well as uh, Ausi Letamboli. And the third? The, the, the gentleman who is uh, currently in custody. Welcome, so Welcome, so Okay. So let's talk about the rest of the funds. It was a 20 million rand grant. What happens to the rest of the money? The 12 million rand that is remaining, the department will still continue to support the legends because this is, we believe it's a noble cause and it is important for the legends. So what they have done uh, is that they have explored opening a different account because they can't use that account, uh, it's quite a risk, but also to have um, um, Mr. Msomi uh, removed from the trust uh, because he can't be part of it when he is facing um, the case 
of possible and fraud mm. and death. And, and obviously it's still an allegation at the moment, but the fact that someone was able to breach security, are there going to be more safety nets put in place to ensure that something like this doesn't occur again, including either new signatories or speaking with the bank on a different type of account? Yes, the, the due diligence, I believe they really did take uh, the, the, the legends. Because if you, like any other account where it's a group account, you will have three or so signatories. But they, are, they have learned it's a lesson learned. I think any bank that they will open the account with, they will make sure that there are extraordinary measures to protect mm. their account. But we still believe we will learn once the FNP also shares with us more light on, more light on how to this happen. Thank you so much for your time. Vusi Muzi Mkize is a Director General at the Department of Arts and Culture. We're taking a quick break. We'll be back shortly.